Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. Hit the like button and please subscribe. It does help my channel out and uh, the subscribers I have, I just adore. I thank them so much for subscribing. And um, we're going to start out tonight. I've got a whole plate full here. <laughs> so let's uh, bring this one up and we'll open her up and we'll see what we got. And I see I gotta make some adjustments here just for a second. And uh, move this over. And I can't do that now, so we're gonna have to do it another way. Let's go this way. And we'll bring this one in and bring this over. No, can't do that either. Well, my goodness, here we go. Well, this is, of course, Mr. Biden. Try not to lose my camera here, folks. Hang on. Okay, well, I don't know about that, but uh, at least he's eating at my favorite ice cream place, <laughs> President Biden. <laughs> While well, eating an ice cream at a Baskin Robbins in Portland, Oregon, President Joe Biden was asked about the U.S. economy by a reporter to which Biden replied, the economy is as strong as hell. With an ice cream cone in hand and in between bites, Biden said, I'm not concerned about the strength of the dollar. I'm concerned about the rest of the world. He is sure he is. Our economy is strong as hell, he added. Inflation is worldwide. It's worse off than it is in the United States. So the problem is the lack of economic growth and sound policy in other countries, n uh, not so much ours. His comments were tone deaf because of the economic hardship being suffered by many Americans were made worse with the recent release of the U.S. Misery Index. Economists uh, have used the most up-to-date data from the Bureau of Labor and Statistics, the BLS, to understand and communicate the state of the country's economic health to consumers. One of the ways economists do that is uh, by using the misery index to give a snapshot of where the country is economically from the standpoint of negative statistics. The misery index, which is found, which you add the unemployment rate to the inflation rate, stands now at a staggering, staggering 11.7% unemployment and the higher than expected 8.2% inflation. Biden was in Oregon to stump, stump STUMP, uh, for Democratic candidates leading up to the midterm elections. But his comments came across as callous and showed that he does not understand the plight of the average American. He just don't give a damn. In fact, according to a CNN poll, at the same time Biden lauded the strength of the American economy, 78% of Americans say the economy is poor or worse. The economic uh, climate of the country has caused some experts to question whether or not inflation will ever get back to the desired 2%. A recent Yahoo Finance article praised, phrased it this way, over the coming year, there will be undoubtedly more pain before the U.S. economy returns to a sense of normalcy. And even when it does, new challenges will emerge I am crossing my fingers that the Fed will somehow thread the needle and orchestrate a soft landing. But if it fails, it won't be because of personality flaws or professional incompetence. It will be because of the near impossibility of the task. Articles like this one seem to already be given excuses for failure before the failure even happens. Hopefully, rather than resigning to prolong inflation and economic turmoil, voters will go to the poll in November 
with the economy as their biggest concern. Yes, I agree. My goodness. Oh, I tell you, Biden just, he, he, he dreams. He, he dreams so much. He <laughs> just can't. I understand. No, sure can't. My goodness. Teachers unions threaten school closures with illegal strikes in Massachusetts. Two Massachusetts public school districts are being threatened with closure by teachers unions that have voted to authorize illegal strikes beginning on Monday if their demands are not met by officials. Although state law prohibits labor strikes by public sector employees, school districts in Malden and Haverhill are facing the prospect of school closures in the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic that has already set child development and education back in immeasurable ways. Massachusetts school districts prepare for illegal teachers. Strikes that threaten school closures again. After leading the efforts to close schools and in-person learning during the pandemic, teachers are now threatening the education process over wages, staffing levels, and class sizes. Malden Teachers Union uh, President Deb Gersuwaldo defended the vote to go on strike in violation of state law. She said that nobody wants to go on strike or take illegal action. Despite that claim, she added that the union feels backed into a corner. It appears that the fact that the union feels disrespected and by how the legal collective bargaining process has advanced means being backed into a corner. Uh, Gosualdo added that she thinks that an illegal strike will send a larger and stronger message that we are not going to be stuck in these toxic cycles of endless disrespectful bargaining that are disrespectful to teachers. Negotiators felicitating the collective bargaining process were expected to continue working through Sunday and as long as necessary to attempt avoiding school closures due to a strike. The Haverhill School District has already threatened to file a lawsuit against the Haverhill Education Association Teachers Union if a strike goes forward. Attorneys for the district have also reported the union to the Massachusetts Department of Labor Relations to express the district's demand for an, an invest investigation. Here I go again, but I'm awake. <laughs> into threats to call an illegal strike. <laughs> Officials and representatives for both affected school districts have pu publicly condemned the threats by, uh, made by the unions. They argue that the threats are not helping to resolve the contract dispute and are going only going to cause direct harm to students who have already fallen far behind in their progress. Local media uh, outlet reported that around 14,000 students are set to be directly impacted if the illegal strike goes forward. Well, let's hope they get it settled and let's hope there's not a strike because that pandemic did put the, the children uh, so far back in school with the schools closing all the time and, you know... It's just uh, one thing and another. It's just, my goodness sakes alive. This one here is a sad note. Very sad. And uh, I didn't keep up on this like I probably really should have. Uh, what was going on. But um, the U.S. prisoners stranded. They have only one hope. U.S. prisoners stranded in Russia. Last month, former U.S. Ambassador to the U.N., Bill Richardson, 
traveled to Moscow to meet with Russian officials in hopes of negotiating the release of WNBA player Brittany Griner. In August, Griner was convicted and sentenced to nine years in prison for carrying VAP, or vape, V-A-P-E, cartridges containing cannabis oil in her luggage at a Moscow airport. Griner maintains that she made an honest mistake when she brought the VAP, vape, cartridges through the airport. Richardson, the founder of the non-fit, non-profit, uh, the Richard Center and a prominent figure in previous hostage negotiations, met with Russian officials on September 13th. However, at the time, the Kremlin spokesman, Dmitry Peskov, denied that any such meetings with Richardson took place, telling Reuters that he had nothing to discuss on the subject. It's unlikely that the Richardson's initial meetings would have involved any high-ranking Kremlin officials, according to the former U.S. intelligence officer, Rebecca Koffler, an expert on Russian and Putin, since most high-ranking officials are focusing on the war in Ukraine. While the Richardson Center would not comment on the September meetings, it did reiterate that the former UN ambassador had, has secured prisoner releases in the past in both official and unofficial capacities. Earlier this month, Richardson told CNN that he was cautiously optimistic that he could secure the release of both Brittany Griner, former U.S. Marine Paul Whelan, W-H-E-L-A-N, Whelan, who is also being held in Russia by the end of the year. Oh, I pray. I hope they do get released. It can't be fun being prisoners in Russia. <clears throat> in an interview two weeks ago, Richardson told CNN that in his September 13 visit to Moscow, he met with senior Russian officials and people close to Vladimir Putin, Vladimir Putin. He suggested that a negotiated deal would likely include exchanging two Russian prisoners for Greiner and Whelan. The Biden administration, however, has distanced itself from Richardson's efforts, saying recently that private citizens cannot negotiate on behalf of the United States government. Leave it up to Biden. In a column last week at 1945.com, Harrison Cass examined the likelihood Richardson's efforts will work. I pray that they do. I pray that they do. Well, I'm going to close this video up, get it posted, and as always, I'll be back. And let me find my button here and say, you are a blessing.